welcome to Fright Fest. Um, how's your experience been? You got in yesterday? I Is got that- in yesterday, yeah. I got in yesterday afternoon. It's been awesome. We like came out and checked out the theater and kind of the area yesterday, and it's been fun so far. So, Hell is Where the Home Is, the screen this morning. Um, as I just said, I really, really did enjoy it. I loved it. Very, very intense film. Definitely. Um, what drew you to the project? It was one of those things. I had worked with, actually, Julio and Diego Halvez, who produced it before, and they talked about Orson, the director, and they just said he's amazing, really cool vision. And when he started pitching me, he pitched me a lot of the crazy colors and the music and all the things that he was going to put into it. And it just was like no other home invasion movie I've ever seen or heard about before. So I was like, I'm, I'm down, let's do it. Exciting. That's what I found really interesting actually is it didn't go where I expected it to go at all. I kind of thought in the first 10 or 15 minutes I had it completely sussed and then turns out I was completely wrong. Um, and the other thing that really struck me is there's actually quite a lot of character development which is quite unusual for a horror. I mean tell me about your character Joe. Yeah. So Joseph is a guy that obviously he's having a little struggle with his wife that they just had a miscarriage before and so they were thinking they're going to go on this vacation and kind of figure out their problems and be able to get out of their city kind of living and be able to kind of relax and be together and obviously that wasn't the case so he's dealing with a bunch of internal struggle where he knows that he had this thing with his wife with the miscarriage and they're going through that and then all of a sudden on top of that he in his past slept with his wife's best friend and so he's been dealing with that not knowing that she was going to show up she shows up Estelle which is this other character and then it just layers all of the things on top of it and it was it's not a good time for Joe. <laughs> it's something I picked up on really actually when um, Estelle walked into the room and the way you two looked at each other and I thought hang on there's something coming here. Um, I mean Janelle Parrish obviously very famous for Pretty Little Liars. What was she like to do those kind of scenes with? She was incredible. She really is someone who's completely present as soon as she got there. I mean, if you can see it on screen is that she's always in it. She's always in it with you. Super collaborative and really just fun to work with. You got to play around you know even in this such intense setting where you're doing these crazy scenes and it's it's really intense what you're watching. It was fun to make especially with her. She was really really collaborative and fun. Yeah. So the pace of the film is quite relentless. Uh, I, th- I felt my nerves were shredded by the time it ended. Um, what's it like for you as an actor filming such intense material? So what was great about this is we actually shot in chronolo- chronological order, which is super rare. So what was nice is we got to build on it. We started out and it's you know, a little lighter and it kind of grows and grows and grows. But by the end, I mean, we were all spent. I mean, that pool scene was freezing cold. We're like really going in the pool for hours and hours and like, you know, it's. It got a little crazy, but it was fun. <laughs> I have to say, the four characters, um, or the four central characters, yours was the one I actually related to the most. I kind of thought he was the most layered, and the, you got the most backstory in some ways. Um, was that helpful for you to prepare to get, you know, this role goes through quite a lot. Did that help you prepare for that? Totally. So Orson and I, we talked probably for about a month and a half before about who this guy is what he's bringing because he does have a lot of those nuanced layers where it's not just oh I'm here with my wife and I want to protect her which is usually what you see in these films there's a lot of other things going on that you have to bring to the table in order to make it real and so that was kind of the dream for me or you know any artist and actors you want a character that you can kind of peel back the layers and work in and out throughout the film and I think it you know it worked out pretty well. So what would you say was the biggest challenge when making this movie? Is there anything that you found quite difficult to get through? I think the biggest character challenge was kind of keeping those layers intact and not kind of letting too much out too soon because it's it's one of those things where as soon as Estelle or Janelle's character shows up, it very easily could have been like, oh shit, something's going on. And kind of holding that back so the audience isn't completely aware that, oh, this is exactly what the deal is. And then physically, I mean, it was, you know, three weeks of night shoots all night in freezing cold, running around getting stabbed and screaming. So it was it was a rough one. It's definitely made me quite scared. I've just booked an Airbnb to go away in a few weeks. So I'm now kind of thinking, is that a real person? Am yeah. I going to get murdered? Make sure there's no pictures of previous murders before you go in there and you'll be fine. Advice. Yeah. Advice. I often think um, doing these kind of films for an actor, is it quite hard when you've had a day of being chased around and as you say, stabbed and terrorized? Is it quite hard to kind of leave that at the door once you finish for the day? It is. It's one of those things that you kind of learn how to do as you continue is that you you have to leave it there or your life's just going to be miserable because you you know, you know bring out so many emotions and you truly try to feel something and to take that home is just tough on everyone around you. So there were days on this where you kind of need to decompress and be alone and not really be around your wife or kids or whatever's going on. 
But most of the time, you try to kind of like close the door, take off the wardrobe, and you're back to your normal life and, and leave it there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, Fares Faruzabalk, uh, that's how you pronounce her name, isn't yes. it? Um, obviously, a legend in this genre, thanks to the craft back in the 90s. Um, what was she like to work with? She was incredible. So, it was funny, as, we, as I said, we shot in chronological order. So, when she showed up and knocked on the door, that was the first time any of us had seen her at all. So, we walk up, and when uh, we're opening the door to see her, she was just immediately that person. She was the character from start to finish, no matter what. And those little nuanced, like, smirks and smiles and her eyes and everything, I mean, it was it was like a master class watching her. It was really amazing. Yeah, she was really good. I have to say, I, I mean, I don't want to give any spoilers away for anyone that's not seen it, but I really didn't know what to make of her at all. Yeah, she's one of those, and that's it worked out for the character, obviously, where she's, she's one of those people that shows up and you want to kind of like her, but something's off. You know, from the beginning, you're like, I don't know what's really going on here, and she played it perfectly. Well, I guess it's that thing where we're so used to seeing the bad in people these days and in this world we live in, um, and you kind of want her to be a good person, but you're not sure, and I, I think, you know, all the characters tried to see that good side of it, didn't they? Definitely, and I think it's also one of those things that, you know, you think about in this day and age, when someone knocks on your front door, you're immediately kind of taken aback. You're not, oh, who is this? Let's open them in, bring them in. It's the same kind of thing, is that no matter what kind of presence or vibe someone's giving off, especially her, you feel this way of, like, what are your intentions? Why are you here? Is this going to be okay? And the way that she kind of massaged her way through that, I thought was great. I did relate to that bit where the knock came and everyone was like, let's just ignore it. Exactly. And I feel like that's kind of how we live now. It's like, oh, turn the lights off. Don't let them see us. But it is what it is. So what other projects have you got coming up after this? Yeah, so I shot a movie called The White Crow that's going to uh, premiere in Telluride and then a film called Farming with Kate Beckinsale that's going to be at Toronto. And so that's kind of the the two next up. And then we'll see from there. I'm going to shoot something this fall in, uh, in New York. And uh, it's, it's been exciting. It's been a good past couple of years. So pretty busy then. Yeah, it's been definitely the 2017. I was shooting from basically August all the way to 2018 May, just back to back to back. So it's been great. So my last question then for you is, as we're at a horror film festival, what's your favorite horror film and why? Man, so I'm a huge Texas Chainsaw Massacre guy. Like I love, I don't know why, honestly, I really don't know why that's the thing, but I'm always drawn to it. Something about the creepiness again of like, you go to this place, you don't really know what's there and all of these things kind of unfold and it scared the shit out of me. So I loved it. That's been a really popular pick actually this weekend. Really? That's interesting. Yeah, well, there we go. It works. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, Best of luck with the film and I hope it does really well for you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.